So can we stop now? Can I yes, stop? Yes, okay. I yeah. stop? Okay. So uh, the next two lectures are concerning uh, the... Uh, uh, does the uh, wait, wait a minute, does it doesn't work? I, I, I have a problem with my computer. I don't, don't know why. Uh, let me check. Okay. Okay, uh, the, the lecture, uh, the, the two less next lecture are concerning the instabilities of planar frames. And I am starting uh, the first lecture with the hydrodynamic instability of frame. And let me start by the jump uh, condition across a hydrodynamic discontinuity. Uh, because we are in this first part, we are considering the frame as a discontinuity, which means that the frame sickness uh, uh, is considered as zero and the curvature effects are completely neglected. Uh, so the frame is a surface of zero thickness separating two incompressible flow. One, the fresh mixture is at low temperature and the high mixture is at, is at uh, and the burn mixture is at high temperature. So because of the low, low Mach number approximation and uh, using uh, an MVC approximation, uh, the flow uh, satisfy the Euler equations. Uh, what is important to, to, to obtain to begin is what are the, the jump across the tilt the frame uh, relative to, to, the, to the flow. So in order to obtain this, you, I have written here, ah, I have put my, where is my pointer? Okay, I have written here uh, the uh, the Euler equation, and uh, uh, in multidimensional, you have u is uh, the velo is a, a x component of the flow velocity, w is a y component, uh, and uh, um, excuse me, uh, excuse me. Okay, where are you? Okay, and. Uh, 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 I will integrate this uh, equation across of, uh, the frame, and I will put, uh, take the limit of the frame thickness going uh, through zero. So, uh, so uh, uh, in that case, all the, the regular uh, integrant goes to zero. The only uh, 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 terms that does not give zero are the terms uh, involving a, 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 a secondary, a first derivative in space. Because in that case, you have such, you obtain by integration the, the jump. And the jump relation you obtain is that uh, the normal burning, the, the, the jump of the flux, mass flux in the normal direction should be zero. And uh, it, it, this, no, this flux is simply the, the it, uh, because you are in the reference frame of the frame, the fl this flux is just the density of the fresh mixture times the laminar flame speed, which is also equal to the burn gas uh, density times the uh, flow in the burn, in the burn side. So, uh, and here are the, the equations that you obtain uh, uh, the jump relation that you are going uh, to use in the following. Uh, the, the important thing in a frame is that the mass flux is non-zero compared to other kind of interfaces. Uh, <coughs> uh, uh, this I, 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 I have written here the, the general picture that you have a, uh, uh, Excuse me, where it's okay. It is uh, here. I am, I, I, I work with, uh, with uh, this picture. I am sitting at the flame. The fresh mixture uh, is propagating from left, and the burn gas is from to la to is propagating, uh, 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 is on the, on the right side 
of the discontinuity. Uh, 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 in the tilted uh, flame, uh, you know, because, because of the conservation of the transverse velocity, which is a jump relation, uh, which uh, is obtained by the conserve uh, 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 momentum is tangential to the flame across the flame. Uh, the, the, uh, tangential, the tangential velocity here is, is the same on both sides. Oh, wait. Oh, excuse me. Here it is. You know, the transverse velocity is constant, and the normal velocity is just in the ratio of the temperature, as it is written here. Uh, because of this, you have a deflection of the streamlines across the tilted front. And this here, it is written uh, the type of uh, flow that you obtain when you have a wrinkle frame. And this flow is going to produce, because of the change of density, which is the same as the sense of temperature because you are quasi isomeric, because of that, you are going uh, to, this flow is going to uh, produce a, a, an instability, meaning that uh, a, the least a wrinkle is amplified because of the flow, as we, we are going to explain that now. <clears throat> so, uh, it, one has to, to keep in mind that uh, the, one should have a, a, a wavelength of the wrinkle here larger than the flame thickness because we, you consider the flame thickness as zero. So, so you, we are working this limit with the wavelength is much longer, much larger, excuse me, than the, 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 the uh, flame thickness. This means that the, the limit that we have to look is this limit where the flame thickness divided by the wavelength is going to zero. In such a way that in this problem, you do not have any lengths other than, uh, 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 than, than, than the wavelength. Therefore, if you are looking to a rate that is the inverse of the time, uh, this should be uh, a, a velocity divided uh, uh, by the wavelength. There is no other possibility. So this is uh, what tells you uh, the dimensional analysis in this limit when you, when you look for the limit of a, a zero flame thickness. Uh, uh, I, here is a picture of the, of the flame, and, and, uh, the, and I will uh, uh, use uh, uh, the notation I will use are uh, the F, the, the uh, subscript, subscript F means at the flame. When this is UF is the flow at the flame. This is a normal flow, this is a tangential flow. Uh, <sighs> So, and the unperturbed flame is at x equals zero, right? So the normal uh, geometrical consideration uh, gives you that uh, if uh, alpha, pro, uh, alpha prime one is the derivative of the amplitude uh, with respect to the transverse co coordinate, the, uh, the, the, the normal burning velocity as this uh, expression, uh, which is a non-linear expression, and this is the expression of the tangential velocity. So, uh, and the normal velocity of the front is the time, deri the time derivative uh, with respect is a derivative with respect to time of the of the of the wrinkle of the amplitude of the wrinkle divided by the square root of the geometrical factor here. Uh, uh, the normal burning, the expression of the normal burning velocity, uh, 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 excuse me, the normal component of the flow relative to the, to the, uh, to the uh, uh, wrinkle front is simply the normal velocity of the flow minus the velocity, the normal velocity here of the front and it is written here, while the tangential component is even here. Uh, conservation of mass tells you that the normal uh, uh, flux should be the same on the fresh mixture and on the burnt side. So uh, 
it depends. Sometimes I use uh, for the notation of, of unburned fresh mixture minus and burned gas plus. Sometimes I use the, uh, the subscript U and the subscript B. It depends. Uh, yes, it's just a question of of uh, it just uh, uh, this has no other meaning conservation of momentum which is p plus rho the square root uh, square uh, uh, normal velocity relative to the front to the square should be zero this conservation of momentum and in the tangential conserve uh, and the Conservation of the tangential momentum is, is that the, uh, the tangential velocity uh, should be conserved. Uh, this equation here for the momentum can be written in terms of the, of the uh, uh, expression of the normal velocity like that, and the tangential is, is explained like that. Uh, so now we know the jump across an, uh, the jump of the flow across uh, the flame. Let me go now back uh, to, to the form, the linearized form of the Euler equation of an incompressible fluid. Uh, uh, linearized means that you any quantity A is a sum of a non-perturbed quantity over bar A plus a delta A. So, <clears throat> and I will use the unperturbed quantity of the mass flux, which is written here. So, now, uh, uh, the, here are the linear equation. The first one is, is the linear equation of the divergence of the velocity zero. You see, this uh, uh, explains the divergence of the, the continuity equation, and this is the Euler equation where now, uh, excuse me, where uh, I have introduced uh, for uh, uh, treat a more general problem, I have introduced an acceleration term, which is, which is uh, uh, with G is the acceleration, an external forces per unit volume, which is due to the acceleration. For, the, for example, when, uh, for when, uh, when you are in the gravity field, this is the gravity, and it does not depend on T, the constant. But for uh, reasons that are becoming clear uh, at the end, it's useful to use a time-dependent force here. In that case, uh, uh, the pressure, the, the, the external forces, can be put in the, because it does not depend on space, can be put in this form and to uh, uh, renormalize the pressure, P, the hydrodynamic pressure, just by a term coming from the acceleration. But this, this is not important for the moment. It will be important when I am going to consider a flame propagating in a tube upwards or downwards. Uh, because in that case, I will have an additional term in the pressure. For the moment, the pi here is for you is a pressure. And now you have the uh, boundary conditions that you have to apply to the linear, linearized equation. You have the boundary condition at the, in, at the flame that I have just uh, uh, discussed before. And you have the boundary condition at uh, uh, at minus and plus infinity. Plus infinity is uh, uh, downstream, the uh, downstream to the, uh, the flame, which is in the burn gas, and minus infinity x is upstream condition in the fresh mixture. In the fresh mixture upstream, there is no perturbation. So the flow, there is no perturbation of the flow. Downstream, you have a perturbation. We will discuss that later on. But what we require is that this disturbance should remain finite. This is a condition we are going to use in the, in the burn side. Uh, now, uh, using uh, the uh, continuity equation here, apply the continuity equation to the, to the Euler equation here, you obtain that the, f the, the, the uh, fluctuation of the pressure should satisfy a Laplace equation, you know, because d, d over dx u 
uh, delta u is equal to uh, minus d over the y delta delta u, you have this and this gives you a Laplace equation. I have written here the problem for a three-dimensional case, but uh, you can simply forget about this three-dimensional for this seed and consider only two dimensions, one well, uh, normal to the flame and one tangential to the flame. But this is not, it's just to have a more general uh, uh, relation. Now, what we are going to do is to use a Fourier decomposition of the flame surface. In fact, we are going to consider an harmonic uh, uh, a periodic uh, disturbance of the, the, the front position, you see, uh, written here. Okay. And because the problem is linear, uh, uh, the general solution is a superposition of such. such a, what is important is that the wave number, which is uh, uh, k here, this k, is, is the inverse uh, uh, with two pi uh, of the wave number, which is uh, 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 shown here. And this is, is a given quantity. You consider, you give the amplitude, uh, no, excuse me, you give the, uh, uh, the wavelength of the disturbance you are considering, and you look now for this ample, for the evolution of this ample, of the of the uh, 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 amplitude uh, uh, associated with this wrinkle and this amplitude is time dependent but no longer dependent on space and it is uh, uh, written tile tilde tilde alpha and this is dependent on t and the problem is to find the evolution of this amplitude. Uh, any quantity field, uh, any field uh, 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 delta A linear field, depending on the X, Y, and T, is expressed in the same form, but now the amplitude here depends on the normal uh, velocity X here. Uh, 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 this is the difference between the, the, the expression of the front at the expression of a flow of a field. And why is a transverse coordinate? Good. So uh, 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 this is written again here. The pressure of satisfy the Laplace equation with this boundary condition here, uh, upstream and downstream. Uh, I, I will be back to the condition on the front later on. And uh, uh, the wave number, and we and, and we have a, what we call a, a wave vector here, which is a given. Let's say the amplitude of this vector is a given, is a given quantity. And now the pressure uh, can uh, 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 can be looked for a pressure in this form, where the uh, where you have a, a tilde uh, plus is for the burn gas, minus is for the fresh mixture and, and tiled P is, is the component of the Fourier, compo the Fourier component or what you want is the amplitude of this uh, of the disturbance of the field at this wavelength. The wavelength being considered as being a, quant a given quantity. Uh, uh, now, uh, uh, if you uh, use this expression, uh, the, the, the Laplace equation, the second derivative in the, in the transverse give minus k square. And so you, you, you have a simple equation for the amplitude of the pressure, which is simply a, an, a, an amplitude time an exponential minus or plus modulus of the wave number x, because this is just a solution of this second order differential equation, okay? And, and this F here means that this is a value at the front. But you see, because you are working the linear approximation, the value of the front of a perturbation field, of the perturbation of a field should be taken at x equals zero because the departure of this 
the amplitude give you a quadratic term that is negligible uh, when you are looking to the linear to a linear approximation. So you find the expression of the pressure easily, except that you do not know this this term here. Uh, now. Uh, 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 because of uh, uh, you have the, the continuity equation, relate, oh, excuse me. Ah, okay, relating uh, 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 the, the, uh, uh, the, log the longitudinal and transverse velocity, this is quite easy. And now the Euler equation. Uh, 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 in the Euler equation, you are looking for a solution in this form here. Yeah? So that it turns out that you you end up with an equation. Okay, okay, here it is. Where is my pointer? Here it is. Uh, this this equation tell you that the link between the amplitude of the uh, 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 longitudinal flow, amplitude of the logical flow, U tilde, plus it's the burn gas minus in the fresh measure, is related to the transverse flow uh, through simply the multiplication by I, K, K being the wave, the, the wave vector. And, and, and double, so you have the relation between U, the longitudinal, and the transverse velocity. Now, if you apply this equation, you because you know now uh, the expression on the right hand side of the uh, Euler equation, the pressure term, you know it because you have solved this equation, you know this, you have now the equation, an equation for the, uh, uh, the flow field U, the amplitude of the uh, uh, longitudinal flow field. So this is the equation that you obtain. And, <clears throat> and now you have to solve an equation here for u tilde u plus minus xt uh, with an external term, which is a, a considered as a given quantity for the moment. You saw, so this is a, 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 a linear equation. Okay, with an external term given. So the general solution, a, 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 the, gen, the solution of this equation is a general solution to the homogeneous equation, which means without uh, the external term, plus a particular solution to the full uh, solution. And we will call uh, R, uh, 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 P, the particular solution, uh, which is going to be a potential <laughs> flow. This is the P means a the potential or particular, and R means the general solution to the homogeneous equation, which is a, a in fact a, a rotational, also as we will uh, understand more clearly later on. This is why it means there. So uh, you decompose the flow field, uh, the, the solution of this equation, like that. And because of the de decomposition, uh, by definition of the decomposition, when you have when the external term is zero, the equation you have to solve uh, for the general solution of the homogeneous equation is this one, and this solution is simply the propagation without deformation of a signal. Uh, uh, at the velocity at the at the unperturbed velocity over by over over bar u, okay. This is the general solution of it. So you know the general expression of the uh, 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 you know the solution of this general solution to the homogeneous problem. Now, uh, because you uh, 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 it turns out this is a is a rotational field. So you have a vorticity, is this in the, on the plus side, on the burn side, this is a vorticity, the expression of the vorticity of the burn gas flow can be written like that. It's T minus X divided by U 
uh, uh, okay, it, it should be plus here because uh, we are on the burn side. So uh, forget about the minus here. This is a mistake. So uh, you, you have this. And, but now, because there is no perturbation upstream that you assume that there is no perturbation upstream, this, this uh, solution, rotational flow, should be zero everywhere upstream. So the, the flow upstream is non-rotational, so this flow is potential. And it is only uh, upstream, it is only u till p minus. Uh, excuse me. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, uh, now look for a particular solution uh, uh, of this equation. Uh, look for a particular solution called u tilde p of this uh, Euler equation, the full equation, in the form u tilde p. Uh, uh, but you see, there is a difference between this is a, a capital P and this is a small p. Depending on time, it's amplitude, and this is a space. Uh, and you look for a solution with the same space dependence as the external flow. You look for such a solution. Uh, let's say, let's see if we are going to find such a particular solution. It turns out that it is easy to find the solution. <coughs> and applying. Uh, excuse me, yes, here. Applying now uh, to this uh, 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 expression, this equation, I obtain uh, an equation of the, for the time dependent solution of the amplitude of this flow here. This is the equation relating this, uh, uh, in fact, relating the flow you take the, the and the pressure P by this relation. Okay, this is straightforward. It's a little bit, uh, uh, let's say, sometimes uh, not easy to follow, but it is straightforward. It's just a question to uh, uh, to do the equation to do to do the solution uh, by yourself. It's not not it's not difficult. There is no conceptual difficulty. It's only uh, calculation that you have to do. So this flow is a potential flow, but now you see you have express you have expressed the full solution in terms of three unknown. One is uh, 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 excuse me C. Uh, uh, you have three uh, 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 unknown for you uh, as a uh, solution. Uh, let me see where is F, U, uh, okay, uh, okay, okay, you are, yes, uh, uh, unknown, an unknown for the amplitude of the, 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 the potential flow upstream, called here U till minus F, the amplitude of the potential flow uh, uh, downstream, called U till the P, Plus and the amplitude of the rotational flow behind. You do not have uh, uh, the pressure because uh, as soon as you know this this unknown solution, you 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 completely know uh, the pressure. So you have only three unknown functions corresponding to the flow at the front x equals zero. Uh, uh, so now you have to solve, you have to obtain these three equations, these three unknown. Now I have uh, written again here uh, where we are. The linear uh, solution of the Euler equation can be expressed in terms of three unknown a function of t, which represents the flow on the front and the minor, the Upstream flow here is related to this amplitude multiplied by exponential k x because you are going to x negative, it should be, go to zero. Now, the pressure is related by the relation that we have seen. Uh, uh, excuse me. The relation uh, which is given here. 
this relation here. Okay. Well, uh, so uh, more precisely, this relation here. Okay. So this is uh, this is what is written uh, rewritten here. Okay. And the 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 burn gas flow, the perturbation of the burn gas flow is expressed uh, with a potential part and a rotational part, which was the rotational part being associated with the pressure by this uh, by the LR equation. And the, the because of the continuity equation, the transverse velocity is obtained in terms of the uh, of the uh, 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 longitudinal velocity, so which is written here in different way. Now, one has to solve this problem. That is, we have to determine determine. Excuse me. We have to determine this free unknown with a boundary condition. Well, one has in fact four boundary conditions at the front involving also the unknown, but the unknown is, is in fact all of everything, so it is not very important. You have two, two equations for the conservation of mass because you assume that the inner structure of the flame is not modified. This is the approximation that we are using from the beginning, which means uh, that the perturbation of the mass flux uh, 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 is the same upstream and downstream. And more, more on that, it should be zero because you do not perturb the laminar flame space. So this gives you two relations. Then you have two for the conservation of the normal and tangential component. And this, uh, uh, this is what I am going to explain now in more detail condition at the front. Here again, you, you have again the notations that are used, which is used, excuse me. And the now let's explain the mass conservation. Max conservation, uh, 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 the uh, transverse, uh, uh, the longitudinal mass function, uh, but because you are linear, the nonlinear term uh, are no, uh, uh, should not be considered. So the equation you obtain is this one. Room, the density, uh, amplitude of the velocity upstream minus the, the velocity of the front equal, uh, equal on, on both sides should be equal and should be equal to zero. This immediately tells you that the, at, the, at, the, at the flame, you should have delta uf equal to alpha point t at, uh, in the fresh vector and in the burn mixture at the flame. f means at the flame. So this is the first relation that you have uh, that uh, you 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 have uh, in mind. Now here is the expression of of uh, uh, the the uh, the flow uh, uh, the same expression as this one expressed in terms of the Laplace uh, of the Fourier transform here, uh, which tell you this is the same as this one. Okay, and. <clears throat> and now, uh, if you take the time derivative of this, you have this relation here, which is, the, which is, excuse me, which is this relation. Uh, when you take the time derivative of this relation, it gives you this relation here that is going to be used uh, later on. Now, let's go to the tangential component. The tangential component as written here now in the tangential component, you have uh, uh, this term, which is a linear term because uh, the bar is an unperturbed flow. So you have to, 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 to use uh, this, <coughs> this uh, 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 conservation of the uh, tangential component. And uh, 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 keeping in mind that the flow Where it is 
Where is my my pointer? Ah, I lost my pointer. Ah, wait, wait a minute. Okay, and here is uh, keeping in mind uh, the solution of the, uh, the linear uh, solution of the Euler equation of the solution of the linear Euler equation that are written here. Now. Uh, 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 writing uh, the uh, 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 the continuity equations give you this relation, and then you obtain this relation here for the uh, uh, conservation of the uh, tangential component. And now, if you put all these things together, you obtain from the tangential component using, oh, excuse me, uh, using uh, uh, the tangential component uses this expression that are uh, written here, you obtain this, uh, 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 this relation, which is a directly a consequence of the tangential component and of the continuity equation, which is written here. And now using, uh, you, you, now you may eliminate du plus over dt by using this, and you obtain this equation when you have eliminated the time derivative of uh, uh, the uh, rotational uh, component of the, uh, of the flow in the burn gun. And you have this relation uh, here, written here. So now, uh, uh, using again, uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, conservation of the mass flux here, you have this term is equal to the time to the wave, uh, the wave vector, the, the, the amplitude of the wave vector times the derivative of the amplitude of the wrinkle. Uh, and now uh, you are going to, to close the problem. You are going to use the normal momentum, which is written here. But in the, in the normal momentum, <laughs> the problem is very simple uh, because, because of the conservation of the, uh, uh, the flow across the plane, this term disappears. So it tells you simply that the pressure is equal on both sides, the like, pressure P. But for, don't forget that when you have an external flow, P, uh, pi, the pi here is P minus uh, an external. So I put this, uh, 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 this is in fact the hydrostatic pressure here that you have. So this, this is the relation that you obtain by the normal momentum, which tells you that the pressure is the same on both sides. Now, if you put this together with the previous result, you obtain uh, uh, using again, uh, you that the flow uh, uh, that you use again uh, the mass conservation here, which is this, it comes from here. So you have this, and uh, elimination of up from this equation, you obtain an equation for the frame front. More exactly, you obtain an equation for the amplitude of the uh, 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 wait, my, my pointer. Okay, you obtain an, uh, an equation for this amplitude of the wrinkle at the wave number k. And this equation is a second order differential equation, constant coefficient here. Okay, here you have a term that uh, it's time dependent coming from the external flow here. And you have uh, uh, the, uh, the, this constant term here uh, like that. Yes, so uh, uh, by using all the, con the condition at the front, you close the problem and you find an equation for the amplitude of uh, the wrinkle at, for a given uh, wavelengths. So this is, we are almost uh, uh, 
done. To summarize, it's uh, sometimes to avoid to get lost in the detail of the calculations, it's good to have a, to have a, a breath, <laughs> a summarize of the, of the result. Uh, that the equation for the Fourier component of the front here, this is a wave vector, which is given, uh, you give the wavelength, is of this form. And don't forget that the main interesting point in the flame is that you have a mass flux across the flame, which is non-zero. So you have it. And this is the external flow. And this is the effect of the non-zero mass flux. Good. So we have a, 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 a first interesting re a general result here. So now let me consider a, a passive, passive interface. What does it mean a passive interface? A passive interface is an interface across which there is no mass flux. For example, uh, between a gas, uh, uh, the vapor and the liquid, uh, neglecting the transformation of liquid in vapor. So you have the same equation as uh, before, but you have a zero, you have to replace MF and the mass flux here, for example. So now you obtain, uh, now you look for a normal mode analysis that you are looking for a solution in the form uh, excuse me, in, the, in this form for the amplitude, this, this is the evolution of the amplitude, this is the initial amplitude, and this is the evolution, and you look for such, such a, a solution in such a way that when the real part, oh, oh. okay, okay, when the real part of sigma is negative, any initial disturbance uh, 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 vanished at the end. And when the real part of sigma here is uh, positive, the, the any disturbance is amplified exponentially by the re real part of sigma here. So this is a, a simple way, uh, this normal mode analysis to discriminate between a linear uh, a problem from a non-linear problem uh, 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 here. Uh, now, in that case, because you have a simple equation which is written here, you can solve it immediately, and you obtain a second or differential equation for uh, 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 sigma square. Assume that G is constant and assume that you are considering a, 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 a liquid above the gas. So you, you consider here this, the relay, what, what is called the relay Taylor instability, where you have uh, the, the uh, the dense flow, uh, uh, excuse me, you have the dense flow above the less dense uh, flow, which is uh, usually the gas. So this is a bubble, it is a formation of a bubble, the Taylor, really Taylor bubble. And so you have an instability of this interface, which is called the Rayleigh, which is famous, which is called the Rayleigh Taylor interface, which is, which is, uh, which develops when uh, uh, the uh, heavy gas is above the light gas, okay, because rho plus is smaller than rho minus. So this is when you have a, a, a liquid here and the gas here, or, or a dense fluid here and the less dense fluid here, and the gravity, the acceleration of gravity, you obtain this equation for the stability, which means that this, this planar flame is unstable and this is called the Atwood member, which is uh, immediately comes out from solving this equation like that. And this Atwood number is simply uh, uh, the relative difference of density of the two flow. 
and the growth rate is the square root of gk. G is the gravity and k the wave number. And this, uh, you can immediately check that the dimension is okay for the inverse of the time here, which is g time divided by a wavelength. A, 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 a square root of that is, is, is the inverse of the time. There is uh, that uh, uh, work that I do not consider, uh, I will not consider, is a nonlinear analysis of what happened at, at the tip here. Uh, 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 for this tip, and if this was obtained by, uh, uh, this nonlinear solution was obtained by Rayleigh Taylor when the density uh, uh, below is zero. So you have something like a, a square root of gr for the, uh, the velocity uh, of a bubble uh, uh, climbing up in a tube uh, filled of gas. With, uh, no, excuse me, in a tube uh, with the gas is below and the liquid is above. This is a, is a bubble. Uh, it is famous uh, 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 bubble velocity of uh, obtained by Rayleigh and by, in fact, by Taylor. Uh, but this uh, requires nonlinear analysis, which is out, uh, uh, which is not that I have not included in my in my uh, uh, course, yes, because I have no sufficient time sufficient time to do that. Now let's consider the opposite case which is the case when the light fluid is above the heavy one. So for G, keep G constant. Now you just change the sign of uh, 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 rho minus, minus rho plus. And you have a minus sign here, okay? So when, when, you, when you obtain this, you obtain that the uh, uh, food number uh, uh, this you have uh, you obtain that sigma is m omega is an imaginary the, is there is a non-zero part of the imaginary part the real part is zero but sigma now has an imaginary part and this is an oscillation uh, what is called the gravity waves uh, the, in fact it turns out it's very nice and this is the frequency of this gravity wave and it is interesting to, to, to know that this result of the frequency of gravity waves was obtain, obtained by Newton, in fact, not by a such sophisticated analysis, but by only on physics, uh, simple physical analysis, he obtained uh, the, the oscillation of the gravity waves. And there is another very important topic that I am going to consider later on, which is the case when the gravity, when the oscillate, when the uh, gravitation is oscillating. Uh, and this is a case when the flame is in, in, in an acoustic, in longitudinal acoustic field, because when the flame is in a longitudinal acoustic field, the flame oscillate and introduce an a, a longitudinal acceleration, which is oscillate in time with the frequency of the acoustic. And this gives you this equation here. Excuse me, where it is. This equation here, this is called that, give you what is called when, when G is, 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 is a, a, a periodic function in time, uh, this tells you uh, this, uh, the solution of that is, is the solution of this problem, which is called the Mathieu equation. And this is a very, very interesting equation that I am going to talk about uh, later on. So this is just to... Now, let me... How much? Okay. Uh, one, I have, um, um, one minute left. Now, let me go to the Dario Landau instability, which is back to the flame. Now, there is a nonlinear mass flux. And uh, uh, to begin, uh, uh, forget about the external field. The, assume that there is no external field. So, the equation that you have to solve is, uh, is here, the second order differential equation, 
where now this mass flux is zero and there is no external forces. So this is uh, uh, the, the, the case of the frame. The, the problem, this was obtained by uh, uh, an engineer, an, aeronautic, an aeronautical engineer in France, very, very old in 38. Unfortunately, uh, his calculation uh, was not published in the real journal. It was published in strange French journal. Uh, and the analysis was developed independently by, of Barrier by Landau, Lev Landau, the famous physicist, Russian physicist. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, I had uh, someone told me a story that Landau solved this problem was when he was put in jail by Stalin. <laughs> because, <laughs> so he spent some time in jail uh, because he, he was working in the Western country uh, during his, uh, as a postdoc and, <laughs> and it was put in jail. And uh, then uh, uh, around the 40, 40, 41, he was uh, uh, taken out of jail because uh, the scientists know that Landau is a very bright scientist that could be useful for the uh, nuclear weapon. Indeed, uh, Landau, uh, contrary to Zeldovich, did not work very hard for the uh, uh, nuclear weapon. He did some work, but uh, not so much. He developed um, a physicist uh, more physical, uh, uh, physicist results uh, uh, later on. So this is a question we have to solve. And working again uh, uh, with uh, 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 a normal mode analysis, you do exactly the same. Now you obtain a second order, a, 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 an algebraic equation of second order for sigma square. Sigma, excuse me, here, here. So the solution is here, is given immediately, it's written here, uh, where apparently uh, 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 the parameter A, which is appear immediately here, uh, which is associated with uh, the difference of uh, uh, which is uh, uh, the difference of density. When, uh, uh, when, when, for example, a limit, there are two li interesting limiting cases. The first one is when the density of the burn uh, uh, of unburned gas is much larger than the burned gas. Uh, the, the, the solution of this second order different, uh, ordinary differential equation, uh, algebraic equation, excuse me, is just uh, the square root of u b u l k. And when in the opposite limit, it's just something like the difference of u b minus u l k divided by two. But you see, uh, 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 we recover the dimensional analysis Saying, saying that the rate should be proportional to the inverse of the velocity of the, excuse me, the inverse of the wave uh, vector, uh, the wave length, only because uh, you have only a ve velocity available in, in, in the problem. So you have, you have two velocity, but uh, okay. So this is this is the main result of. Uh, 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 but it turns out that this result, you know, this it, it, yeah, this tells you a very strange result is that smaller is the wavelength, that is larger the scale, stronger is uh, the growth rate. Uh, but don't forget that from the beginning we were assume that the, uh, uh, that you cannot have a, a wavelength shorter than the flame thickness. So uh, this analysis uh, is, should, cannot be taken seriously uh, for very, very uh, small wavelengths. So uh, the best is now I just uh, stop here for a five min a 10 minutes breaks and I start again in 10 minutes, okay? Okay, so I stop here now for five for ten minutes. Ah.
Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, it, it turns out that the problem at the small wavelength, uh, wavelengths, which, which is not considered by the Darius Landau analysis, is, uh, uh, is going to introduce a stabilizing mechanism because of diffusion. Uh, uh, of transverse diffusion. I will explain that uh, in more detail uh, in a few minutes. Uh, but you can have a, got a, a simple idea of how the diffusion, the transverse diffusion is working uh, uh, by, uh, uh, where is my pointer? Yeah, okay. By considering that you have to add to the diffusion, to the to to the uh, flame speed, the, the perturbation of the flame front, you have to add a transverse diffusion due to to the. I will explain that in more detail. So this, if you do that, you are going to obtain a, a, a corrective term when considering a, a, a smaller wavelengths k. Uh, uh, excuse me, larger K, the, which is smaller wavelengths lambda, you have to, to introduce a K square term, K square term coming from the diffusion equation, which is, as I explained in my first lectures, uh, first day, uh, are stabilizing. It turns out that uh, uh, the uh, physical interpretation of the Darieu lambda and uh, the hydrodynamic instability of, of Darieu Landau uh, can be explained uh, without calculation uh, on the on on this picture here, because of the deflection of the streamline. You uh, when you are when you are, when you wrinkle the front here is the fresh mixture on the left, burn gas are on the right. Turns out that you, the the uh, the flow is going to have this this shape, and be, uh, to satisfy the deflection uh, of the streamline because uh, burn gas are less dense than than So uh, you uh, uh, the uh, uh, the tube the uh, flow tube here yeah, is enlarged so that if you consider the velocity of the the flow velocity because of incompressibility, the flow the flow velocity here is smaller than at infinity. So the flow velocity here is smaller than the laminar flame speed, and the flow velocity for the same reason, for a similar reason, the flow velocity just uh, in the burn gas behind A is smaller than U B, but. Uh, because the, the, the mass flux across the flame is not modified, this is a basic assumption of the analysis, this point here has to, to propagate with a non-zero velocity uh, on, on the left in order to recover a, vel a relative velocity equal to UL. And uh, for the same reason, the flow velocity in the, the flame velocity on B, the, the B has to propagate with a non-zero flame velocity on the right in order to uh, uh, recover the, U, the UL and UV velocity. And so you see that uh, uh, this hydrodynamic effect, which is simply resulting from the tilting of uh, the flow velocity, uh, excuse me, the, the deflection of the flow velocity across the tilt front, uh, explain uh, that uh, the flame is strongly unstable uh, uh, because of hydrodynamic instability. Okay. This is just uh, to, to uh, explain uh, that one, uh, that once the calculation has been, has been done, one can obtain a simple representation of the physics of the phenomena. Uh, <coughs> now, let me give you a uh, 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 simple, uh, a simplified analysis 
of the effect of the curvature. That now we want to take into account the finite thickness of the uh, frame so that uh, 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 the, in fact, this finite thickness telling you that the mass flux is going to be modified because of the modification of the inner frame structure when by the curvature. Because we you know this modification is associated with the ratio of the thickness divided by the radius of curvature. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the, simplific the very simplified approach that I am going just to present in two slides, in two slides here, uh, it is it, not uh, 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 completely uh, satisfying from the theoretical point of view. What I am going to do, something which is not completely right, and in fact it is wrong, that uh, the, no, the, the, the mass flux is perturbed now, is, is, not, is no longer zero, but I will keep the same modification on both sides uh, uh, in the upstream in cold mixture and downstream hot mixture. So uh, this assumption, this is an ad hoc assumption here, which if indeed is not right. But this is in us to understand what is going to appear uh, uh, in the equation of the linear growth rate. <clears throat> now, because uh, you are considering that the transverse diffusion, and this can be explained in, in, uh, uh, in this picture here, you see, when you wrinkle, uh, the uh, the frame and when you do not neglect the the frame thickness, you see because of the concentration profile, this is a fresh mixture. So the the, the limiting spatial is going to zero at uh, on the burn side, but the temperature is increased in the opposite direction. So when you are wrinkling a frame, you see uh, if you consider the profile of temperature and concentration, they are shift on the, by, on the here and here on the X axis. So that you are going to introduce tra uh, gr transfer gradient of mass and of energy temperature. But these two gradients are in the opposite side. So uh, these two gradients are going to produce a, a either a stabilizing effect or non or destabilizing effect, as I am going to explain you in the following lecture. But assume for the moment that this unbalance of the transverse flux is going to stabilize the frames, which in, in a sense, that uh, you are going to cool this frame. Uh, the, here is a, is a surface of heat release, and you you here you are going to decrease the, temp the frame temperature, and, 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 and uh, no the, the opposite. You are to increase the temperature here and to decrease the frame temperature here, so that you increase the frame the, the frame propagation from that and you decrease here the frame temperature. So you restore, you, are, you have an effect that is going to counteract the hydrodynamic instability uh, by a diffusion effect, which is a case square effect, uh, contrary to uh, uh, the hydrodynamic, which is, uh, <coughs> which is uh, 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 an effect proportional to, the, to K for the growth rate. So now you assume that the perturbation of the mass of the mass flux tells you that you have that it is associated with a diffusion uh, transverse effect with this term B, which is positive. So now you have this relation here. If you put that 
if you take this into account in the uh, in the normal momentum, you simply uh, you know you simply change the uh, uh, Landau Darius Darius Landau analysis by introducing two additional curvature effect, you know, here and here, one in the constant term, one in, in the first derivative term. It turns out that this effect can be forget because it's, because it, it is already, it, it introduced an effect of order, of following order, you know, because now you assume that uh, the, the the wave number, uh, so k, you, you expand in the wave number k, so this term, because the alpha over dt is already small, this term is k square a small term, and so it's negligible in, in, in front, for example, of this term, which is only k, which is, excuse me, <laughs> this term here, which is only a k square term. So you can neglect and you obtain the same equation by this simple analysis, except you are now, you are introducing now a, a, an additional term a, a, a in the constant factor here in terms of, okay. And this additional term is a K cube term that you have here. And, and uh, uh, you, uh, if you use a non-dimensional quantity for the linear growth rate, here, which is scaled by the uh, uh, by the uh, 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 transit time of a particle across the flame, and you scale the wave number uh, by uh, the inverse of uh, uh, the thickness of the flame. So you instead of using a sigma and k, you use a non-dimensional quantity s. This s. And, and kappa here. And you have here, you can introduce here, uh, uh, you have here uh, an additional term, a, a k square here, which is uh, uh, in addition of, of, uh, of the nonlinear term here, which is uh, this additional term compared to the Landau, the Landau term is here. This is the gravitational forces. This is the Landau term, and this is the additional term coming from this perturbation here that you have had. So, uh, uh, and this, uh, the, if you now uh, introduce uh, the marginal reduced wave number kappa m, which is simply the inverse of uh, b, of the term b, has been introduced here, a non-dimensional number. <coughs> uh, 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 if you look for the stability limits, uh, let's say S equals zero, you want to see uh, what are the uh, limit for kappa, uh, you find a second order differential equation for uh, the uh, 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 marginal uh, unstable wavelengths which is of second order when G is the full number because you assume that there is a gravity so uh, acting. And here is the equation again. This is the equation uh, that your second, uh, you know, this, this, if you, if you kill this term here and if you kill G, this term gravity effect, uh, this is the Landau analysis. Now, in addition of the Landau, you have a, correct, a correction term, which is uh, this one, and this is the gravity effect. So, um, it, such an analysis was developed uh, in a phenomenological way, uh, more phenomenological way than that, uh, than the, uh, what is uh, presented here, uh, by a man called uh, uh, Mark Stein around the middle of the last century. So it's not new, but uh, uh, but it's and this and the result is here, and it is a very interesting result. You see uh, now you uh, the the root, the root 
of uh, this uh, 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 um, kernel here is comma, comma minus kappa plus, and depending on <coughs> the effect uh, of G naught, which is a, a Froude number, in fact, uh, the inverse of a Froude number, which is proportional to the gravity and it's related to D, DL detonation uh, flame thickness divided by the square of the velocity or by of the laminar flame speed. Depend on this G naught, uh, you have two typical cases. Uh, one is you are unconditionally stable. There is no unstable wavelength. All the wavelengths are stable. This for whatever be kappa, kappa, the real sigma is negative. So this is when G is sufficiently large uh, 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 and when uh, uh, G become less and less now appear two roots. So you are unstable only on in, a, in an intermediate range here uh, of wave number. So you see, you have stabilized the very large kappa by this uh, uh, diffusional effects. And also the gravity effects are stabilized the very low, long wavelength that it's a very small kappa uh, wave, line, wave uh, number. Uh, and so that you have a finite range of unstable wavelengths. So uh, this is, uh, they said, and uh, the marginal wavelengths uh, kappa minus here and kappa plus here, a solution of this equation, good. And uh, uh, what I say, stabilize, gravity stabilize the small kappa, which is the, the large wavelengths, and uh, the curvature stabilize the small wavelengths on the kappa large. <laughs> and this is valid if G is sufficiently large, which means that the flame propagation, the, uh, when the flame propagate, propagates downwards, because uh, the sign of G depends on the, of the direction of propagation because of G, uh, uh, when the flame is sufficiently low, typically below 10 centimeters per second, when the flame propagating down, propagate downwards, uh, uh, you are completely stable. And this is exactly what was observed in the experiment in 82 by, uh, by uh, Joel Kinar, Louis Boyer, Joel Kinar, and Jeff Sirvi in, uh, in a very interesting pa uh, 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 experimental paper. Uh, and, and, but but uh, qualitatively, the result was known by, by Mark Stein, but uh, the, uh, the quantitative aspect uh, was well, what uh, was uh, uh, well uh, uh, obtained by uh, this more recent experiment, uh, which was developed, uh, let's say, 20 years after Mark Stein. But what is interesting, is when you are arrive at the critical wave number, uh, critical uh, uh, food number here, or inverse of the food number here, uh, uh, appear a very small range of unstable wavelengths, and this is known in physics when you have when you have this is a bifurcation at a given wavelengths. Uh, it is known in physics that you are going uh, uh, in a generic manner to produce hexagonal patterns. And this is hexagonal pattern were observed for the first time by, uh, by this, uh, by, uh, by in this experiment. Well, on the other side, uh, when, the <laughs> when, when, when the, uh, you are in the uh, opposite, uh, when the, you are, when the flame propagate, propagates upwards, you have to be back to the previous analysis that I have developed, uh, uh, looking like uh, the related instability. Okay, uh, now I am going to, uh, to talk uh, to the other type of 
to another type of instability, uh, which is uh, the thermodiffusive instability. So <clears throat> now I, I want to discuss with you uh, a new instability, well-known now instability of frame, which is called a thermodiffusive uh, instability. So let me begin by some consideration uh, concerning uh, uh, the frames, the frame stretch, and what is called the Markstein numbers. So uh, two mechanisms modify indeed the inner frame structure. As I told you, there's two mechanisms are diffusive and act in the transverse direction. One is uh, the heat flux in the transverse direction, which is in the opposite direction of the mass flux of the limiting spaces, uh, which is in the opposite transverse direction. So, uh, <clears throat> this is written here in, uh, uh, in this. Uh, in a schematic way, yeah. you know, here you have this transverse direction that is going to disturb the analysis uh, uh, that I have sketched uh, at the end of the first lecture. But now I am going to, to try to understand this diffusive uh, mechanism. And uh, uh, I will introduce what is called uh, the Markstein number, which is uh, which express the modification of the laminar flame speed u minus n is uh, uh, the laminar is the normal velocity relative of the flow relative to the gas on the fresh side. This is the relative velocity of the of the normal frame speed. And uh, that is related, in fact, uh, uh, by what is called the rate of stretch of the frame surface. So uh, let me uh, 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 introduce now what is called the stretch rate uh, or the stretch rate strain and curvature of the frame. Consider a passive interface. An inter and, and consider an element of surface of a passive, passive interface and, and we, we define the uh, uh, stretch rate, uh, a local stretch rate is simply the time derivative, the derivative with respect to time to an elementary surface of this time div divided by this uh, elementary surface. This is a time, and this time is uh, 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 the uh, stretch rate. It's a local quantity, depends, it varies from one point to another point on the surface. <coughs> now, uh, uh, consider an element of volume. The element of volume is uh, 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 the element surface, surface multiplied by uh, the uh, 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 variation in the normal direction, uh, zeta here. What we know is because of, uh, assume that the flow is incompressible, the, in the compressible, uh, the continuity equations uh, uh, tell you that this, this rate here, which is a volumetric rate, is simply the divergence of the flow, by the, almost by definition of the divergence of the flow. Now, if you enter, if you now decompose uh, 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 this using uh, this expression, and you, you obtain this plus this, this is a normal uh, a variation in the normal direction, this is a uh, 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 
uh, variation of the elementary uh, or the, uh, the surface, uh, the elementary surface. So if you do that now, if you compute uh, in a simple way the rate of increase of the distance from the notation, uh, the norm, uh, the norm on the normal to the flame, and, and this is simply, uh, excuse me. This is simply the difference of velocity at the different position where in the normal direction. This is the velocity time uh, sc scalar multiplied by the uh, norm in, by the normal. Uh, Nf is uh, normal to the flame, uh, unitary normal to the flame. So now you know this expression, and you know this expression here. Putting together, you. Uh, 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 you obtain uh, now using uh, a first order, uh, uh, excuse me, I, I, I was too fast. Uh, using uh, now uh, developing in, in Taylor series uh, this term here, you obtain that this term here is uh, uh, related to the gradient of. Uh, uh, the uh, the tensor of the uh, gradient of the velocity, which is a strain rate uh, a tensor, multiply uh, uh, on both sides uh, uh, by uh, by this is a tensor, and this is a normal. So you obtain from this equation by the Taylor assumption, you obtain this form here. Now putting together this here, this form here, you obtain this relation for the uh, uh, growth rate uh, of a surface, which is the divergence here of this, uh, of the flow at the surface, minus this expression of uh, coming from the rate of strain tensor. In fact, this expression was obtained by Bachelor which, was, which is a famous fluid mechanic English in, in England. A and uh, it was uh, uh, used in the flame uh, more recently. So, uh, 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 when considering the first order correction to a, a flame uh, velocity, you obtain uh, that the linear growth rate excuse me, here, this, this, excuse me, that the, st the, the stretch rate here is simply uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this expression here. Now, because of incompressibility, you, uh, this divergence of U is zero, usually, so you have only uh, uh, for the stretch rate, you have only this expression. And by considering that uh, uh, the divergence of the normal is by definition the inverse of the radius, the mean radius of curvature, the, which is the mean curvature, uh, 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 you obtain this expression here for <coughs> the stretch rate of an element of surface on a flame. This is a purely geometrical uh, 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 relation. This is purely geometrical. Uh, now it's interesting to to look to uh, to the physical interpretation of each term. The first term here is a front curvature. And the second term is a strange rate. Strange rate, you have, for example, here, this, this term is the strange rate where there is no curvature of planar flame, which is blown on a solid wall. Uh, uh, you have this, this is this effect here. The flame, so you have this, this expression. And the other is, uh, <coughs> In that case, uh, for 
uh, 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 an imploding flame, uh, the flow is at rest, the fresh flow is at rest, so there is no strain rate, and you have only the curvature effect. Uh, now, when you study the internal modification of the flame structure, taking into account not only the diffusive effect, but also the gas expansion, this was done, uh, uh, this is not an easy task, uh, and was done in 82 and 83. Uh, you obtain this relation here, saying simply, uh, and giving the expression of this mark, this is called the Markstein number, and you find out the modification of the frame uh, velocity by the stretch rate, okay? <clears throat> and uh, the, the results are expressed here in, uh, uh, in terms of the density ratio, which this is the hydrodynamical effect, and in terms of a Lewis number, which is the ratio of thermal diffusivity by the uh, molecular diffusivity of the limiting species, assuming that the reaction is one step, uh, uh, irreversible one step, like in the Zeldovich analysis, Frank Kamineski analysis, and you obtain, and we end this in 82, 83, we obtain this uh, expression, even for con varying heat conduction. When the heat conduction is varying with, with temperature, we obtain, we have obtained this, uh, this general expression of the Markstein number. So this result is obtained in the limit of large activation energy for a one step uh, chemical reaction controlled by an Arrhenius law. And you assume the limit of large activation energy as in the uh, 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 analysis of uh, uh, Zeldovich and Frank Kamineski. So it's an extension of the Zeldovich Frank Kamineski analysis to a curve frame, curve and stretch frame. This, uh, so as you see, this result were obtained uh, 20 years ago almost. Eh? Uh, no, no, 40 years ago. <laughs> 40 years ago. And it more recently, uh, we did the same uh, uh, analysis, not with a multiple self model, but I will explain you that later on. What, but with, with a multiple step flame model. And in that case, we found a different Markstein number <coughs> for the curvature and from the, strength, the, the stretch rate. As there is a uh, uh, Markstein number uh, for the strain, stretch rate and C is for the curvature, I see. So you do not have the same Markstein number. It, it turns out uh, that we have guessed uh, this difference, uh, that the two Bach numbers are equal. It's a, a, it's a consequence of the model of one step in the large activation energy limit. So in a more general case, the, you, you, you are faced, you have to consider, excuse me, two Markstein numbers that are different. Uh, uh, and it, it, it was obtained uh, by Matalon and others uh, uh, that they realized uh, that the, the, Markstein, the Markstein rate, the Markstein, the Markstein number here, it's sensitive to the place where you put the flame surface in, inside the, uh, the flame thickness. So it's varied. So they have noticed that, and in fact, this is a, a, a general result that is obtained uh, when considering a multiple step chemistry. 
Uh, in addition of that, it was recognized uh, long ago, not long ago, some time ago, that the Markstein number, even in uh, uh, with uh, <coughs> one uh, 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 one step Arrhenius law, depend if you look on the burned gas side or on the fresh mixture. This was already uh, so. You know this uh, Markstein number series. Uh, now it's completely clarified, but it was a problem which was not so easy to handle because of uh, the fact that this, uh, this uh, strain rate depends where you define uh, the flame surface inside uh, the, the flame thickness. But now the problem is fully resolved, fully solved. <coughs> uh, so, uh, Let's escape this. It shows some example where you may measure how to measure uh, one of this uh, number and, and the other, but uh, it's not necessary to, to develop this point. Now, let me go to the, uh, uh, very, to the other type of instability uh, in flame, which is a thermal diffusive instability. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this instability mechanism, mechanism has nothing to do with the uh, hydrodynamic instability. It's a quite different mechanism, which was, uh, uh, was uh, analysis was initiated by Sivashinsky in 77, and with Guy Joulin, we have developed this uh, two years later. Uh, uh, and the uh, the idea is that uh, uh, we we are considering uh, the uh, the basic equation of the uh, flame dynamic in the quasi isobaric approximation uh, and introduce uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, this reduced quantity, the temperature, the reduced temperature is going between zero in the fresh mixture, one in the burned gas, the mass fraction psi of the limiting component psi uh, going to one in the fresh mixture to zero in the burned side, and the uh, reduced activation energy, and this is the reaction rate, is a reaction characteristic reaction time. Now, what, you, what we are going to assume to completely kill the hydrodynamic instability, that is a free mechanical problem that we have just, that, that was just considered by Landau and, and, and by Darius and Landau who neglecting the inner flame structure. Now we are going to do just the opposite. We are going to neglect the hydrodynamic effect that is associated by the fluid mechanic problem because of the difference of density and consider only the effect of, of the diffusive effect uh, uh, inside the flame that can be described by this equation when the density is concerned. So uh, 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 this is a basic model uh, uh, to study the thermodiffusive, to, to study a new, to, to put in evidence a new mechanism of instability that has nothing to do with the instability of uh, 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 hydrodynamic instability of Dario Landau. Uh, so, uh, 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 when we working now with this uh, uh, reduced equation for theta and psi, the only difference you have in this equation, in the two equations, except for the sign here, minus conception of the, of the reactants and the heat release plus here, is a, a diffusion coefficient. This is a molecular diffusion coefficient of the species, the, 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 uh, uh, which is decomposed, the reactants, and DT is a thermal diffusivity, Landau-Berossi, 
uh, uh, controlling this, uh, involved in this equation. Uh, we, uh, we have studied uh, this flat planar frame. Uh, it's easy to study the, the we have studied the, I, I showed to you the study of this planar frame when Lewis was equal to the planar. Uh, here, huh? it's only planar. I, I did that only uh, for Lewis number equal to one. It's very easy to, uh, it's not difficult in fact, to extend this Zeldovich analysis for Lewis different by one. By the way, the, this was first, was done for the first time uh, by Landau in a, in a small uh, article uh, in 44 years. Uh, and and, and uh, this is a reaction layer. The difference it, it comes from the reaction layer. And uh, the result is when you measure uh, the flow velocity, the frame speed relative to its value when the Lewis number is equal one, you obtain uh, as a result that uh, uh, this is the ratio of the two uh, <coughs> eigenvalue uh, uh, laminar frame speed is simply square root of m of the Lewis number. Lewis number, let me uh, 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 recall that it is simply the ratio of the thermal diffusivity divided by the diffusional the, uh, uh, molecular diffusivity of the limiting species. So flame, tem flame temperature now uh, of a curved frame for Lewis different from one. So the analysis, and this is what we have developed with Dijuin, the techniques that we have developed with Milo in the thesis in fact of Dijuin, it was in 79, I guess. Uh, 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 that is not new. That you have to consider a limit where the activation energy goes to infinity, but the uh, difference of, uh, of Lewis number minus one only as for the one over beta in such a way that assuming this uh, order of magnitude for the difference of the, for the difference from unity of the Lewis number, the flame, the flame temperature is not, mod, uh, is not modified in order of magnitude, relative order of magnitude, only by an order one over beta, which is suitable because in the, the reaction rate is beta time exponential the, the theta f minus one. And when beta goes to infinity should be of order unity, otherwise you have a, a, a singular problem. So this is quite, the, this, asympt this is called an asymptotic limit that you have to consider in order to solve this problem. Uh, now, uh, the, the analysis is uh, uh, almost, uh, is, it, it's not simple. It's, this analysis is subtle, uh, but it, it can be summarized as follows. The, the, um, uh, uh, the inner structure, the thermal equation in the inner structure a take of this form because in the inner structure, the conductive term is negligible in terms of uh, the diffusive term. So the ancillary term are negligible. And uh, what you have inside the inner structure is that you have a balance of the two flux uh, 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 mass flux and, 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 and thermal flux. Uh, so now you, this become a little bit more technical. You consider you uh, calling theta f the modification of the flame surface of excuse me of uh, the flame temperature. Uh, you introduce uh, the capital theta one, uh, which is yeah defined here because this is depending on space now. This is a constant uh, that. Uh, you have to know that it is a constant, it doesn't vary. 
uh, uh, does not have any space, I mean. Uh, 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 and you consider also inside the inner structure, the variation of all the one over beta for the, for the heat, for the uh, mass fraction. So uh, <clears throat> when, okay, now, uh, Integrate, integrating and matching with the external structure, you obtain uh, this jump relation that are written here. Uh, that you have to use to solve the external the, the external flow. This is the same relation that you already see. Uh, telling you what is the flux of it coming out from the reaction zone to warm up uh, uh, the fresh mixture. And this is the same relation, except that now it depends on the temperature of the, fl of, of the, temp of the flame temperature, which is the, the temperature of the burnt gas at the reaction zone as it is modified by the diffusive process. And valid up to the first order in the expansion of beta, you have the conservation, this relation of a, a flux conservation. And this is crucial point. You know, the two, two crucial points are considering an asymptotic limit, uh, what is called in, in, in applied math, a, a distinguished limit, large activation energy, Lewis minus one, uh, small, so as small as the inverse of the large activation energy. And uh, these are the two uh, relations that you obtain, the second one being valid up to the first order in expansion of one over beta. And now you have to find uh, this uh, uh, flame temperature. So you solve uh, as usual as, as uh, was done before the created zone. And, uh, uh, and now uh, you have to solve now the predicted zone in the reference frame attached to the reaction sheet, which is this reaction sheet is shifted by the amplitude of the wrinkle. So this is a little bit more uh, sophisticated. You use the change of uh, variable and you linearize. Uh, here are the external equations that you are now to solve. You, you can recognize easily each term. On the left-hand side of each uh, uh, equation, uh, you have the time derivative, the convective term, the transverse, the diffusive term in the uh, 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 normal direction and the transverse diffusivity. And then you have an external, uh, uh, an external term here coming from the change of variable because you, you are working, you know, when you are shifted, you are working uh, 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 relatively to the, uh, uh, to the reaction zone, which is shifted by the wrinkling. So this is a, a linear, the, the terms, the external term, and the two equations differ only by the Lewis number. If Lewis number equal one, these two relations are, are equivalent. Now you look for an harmonic analysis and you use uh, still, uh, 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 and you, you use uh, 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 the reduce growth rate and the reduce wave number as, as we did before. And you develop uh, uh, this the hat A is the amplitude of the initial disturbance. And you look for an, uh, uh, an harmonic analysis with a, a term uh, with a exponential in time and a, a, a wave number uh, because you are considering a, a periodic disturbance on the transverse direction. So you have this, and <clears throat> now you decompose in the same way uh, the, the variation of 
the concentration of the limiting species and the reduced temperature in the same way. You have now two, uh, two functions to obtain that are, and these two functions here satisfy this second order differential equation uh, 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 and the time disappear because it, it, it's, it is through, it appears through uh, the linear, the reduced growth rate and through, and the transverse direction disappear because it appears only through the wave number here. So you have to solve this problem. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, let's have now, I guess, uh, for, uh, for, uh, 10 uh, uh, minutes breaks and I start again in 10 minutes, okay? Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, so here are the equation uh, that, that we have to solve. Uh, this equation are now uh, uh, relatively simple, but I understand that uh, I, uh, in, but the calculation is, is tedious. It's not very, very complicated, except for gas synthetic analysis, which is a rather, rather subtle to understand. The calculation is straightforward, but, uh, but uh, it's, it's a tedious uh, to follow. So let's obtain the linear, the, this solving this equation and using the boundary conditions that I have just described before, we obtain the, uh, here are the boundary condition uh, uh, and the jump condition, uh, the jump condition that you have to apply and uh, the boundary condition on both sides. <coughs> so uh, the, uh, once again, the uh, 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 wave number is uh, given and we have to find the linear growth rate and uh, uh, the uh, flame temperature theta, theta flame. So here are the uh, external, so I, I, I will skip the detail now. Uh, using the boundary condition, you obtain the general equation of, of the homogeneous problem here for theta uh, and uh, 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 you obtain the mass fraction uh, and you obtain uh, the, um, the expression of uh, the mass flux in the external solution here, which is written here, uh, which is here, excuse me, and where this exponent is here, this is dependent, is depending on the wave number. Uh, uh, now, if you have to use a jump, boundary jump condition with the asymptotic expansion that I have already explained. Uh, and the second condition uh, tells you, uh, gives you this second relation here, give you this relation here that uh, uh, that is written here, and uh, and this gives you the leading order uh, of the flame temperature in terms of the leading order of Lewis minus one, and in terms of the linear growth rate and the wave number. So here you see this is the expression of the temperatures you obtain from here uh, in terms of the Lewis number here. The, this is the linear, is the growth rate and kappa is the wave number. So you see it's not uh, it's tedious, but not very uh, uh, difficult. Now you apply the first uh, condition and this first condition uh, relate the, the <coughs> like in the, as in, excuse me, as in the uh, planar case, it's related the flame temperature to the slope in the plate region. And uh, 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 this uh, tells you what is the flame temperature now. It gives you a second expression of the flame temperature theta f 
in terms of the wave number, excuse me, uh, and in terms of the growth rate, putting together now these two, these two relation, you obtain the dispersion relation, which is expressing the, the, the growth rate here, the radius growth rate here, in terms of kappa, the wave number, the solution of this equation. It's an algebraic equation now. Now, here is the equation that it's written again. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, if you look uh, for a weekly curve limit in such a way that now you you are uh, in order to to see uh, 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 what the solution, what the situation is, you look to the weekly curve limit, which means that, that you are looking to kappa small. What does that mean, kappa small? This means that the wavelengths is is is, uh, 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 is large compared to the detonation thickness. So this is an analysis, the, the, the limit that you are considering. And, and, and uh, uh, this, uh, this tells you that the growth rate is also smaller than unity. And here is the relation that you obtain. This is the main result. It tells you, it tells you that the growth rate is proportional to the square of the, of the wave number as it should be because it is a diffusion coefficient. But now you have a coefficient here where, where L is beta activation energy times the Lewis number minus one. And depending, depending on the sign of this coefficient, you see, you will have a, 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 a sigma positive or negative depending on the, on the sign. So when the Lewis number is sufficiently large, which is when Lewis, the small L is larger than minus two, okay, this term is positive. So you are stable because sigma is negative. But on the other, on the, the, on the opposite case, you are unstable. So this, <coughs> uh, uh, the, uh, now if you are back to the original equation, uh, let's say that alpha yt, x equal alpha yt, x equal alpha yt is a flame surface. This is the second, you obtain, in fact, as I as we have guessed uh, uh, from dimensional analysis, you obtain a diffusion equation in this limit of a uh, 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 small wave number, uh, large wavelengths. You obtain a diffusion equation with a coefficient n. <laughs> you are stable if the diffusion, if the effective diffusion coefficient here is is negative is positive and unstable if it is negative, you know. So, uh, from a physical point of view, the situation is 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 uh, uh, <coughs> relatively clear. Let me. So uh, 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 now uh, this is written. Uh, the, so, the the general solution is written here with. Uh, to in three dimension, but this is uh, there is nothing more than what what is written here, and that this is simply the radius of curvature, the mean radius of curvature, and the Markstein number that you obtain, uh, uh, that the Markstein number that I uh, talk about at the beginning of the, of the lecture is simply this uh, uh, expression beta Lewis minus one plus two. That's all. Uh, and uh, uh, now, if you take if you do the same analysis with taking into account the gas expansion, you obtain a much more uh, uh, sophisticated expression of the Mach, no Mach number, taking into account 
the, the density ratio and reducing to, uh, to the, this one when uh, uh, the density uh, uh, ratio uh, goes to unity. Uh, and the physical explanation is written here. You see, <coughs> see if, if now you push the analysis that has been de described completely, this result to the second order. This is the first order in Kappa. Now go to the second order you obtain a systematic uh, stabilizing term, which is the, the, the kappa to the fourth. And this is a, a stabilizing term, uh, uh, stabilize the large wavelengths, which systematically stabilize the very small uh, wavelengths. That, so, uh, 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 in a sense, uh, the thermal diffusive and stability tells you that the very small wave number are stable and the, you have an instability, uh, uh, thermal diffusive instability for, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 for the uh, large uh, wave number uh, in uh, in an unstable range, if the Lewis number is small. If the Lewis number is large, now you are unconditionally stable. This means that the thermal diffusive instability uh, does, you know, this means that the thermal diffusive mechanism is stabilizing uh, and, and do not destabilize. It is interesting to notice uh, that this instability that you obtained here for small Lewis number, it, 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 it results from the competition of two diffusion mechanisms in the transverse direction, the heat conduction and the molecular diffusion of the limiting species. And the first, uh, and this is a very surprising result that tells you that the diffusive coefficient where there are competing can be destabilizing, contrary to what the, what is thought uh, is what usually people thought is that uh, diffusion is not the way that is No, one has to be careful because these two uh, uh, diffusion mechanisms act in a different way in the frame on on the frame temperature. So, so, so that one is increase the flame temperature, the other is decrease the flame temperature, and so the result may be unstable. So a competition of diffusion coefficient can lead to an instability. And this was uh, 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 recognized uh, in a famous paper by Alan Turing, who is a, a famous scientist, considering uh, uh, reaction, uh, 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 some type of belousov zabotinsky equation, uh, 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 reaction. But it turns out that Zeldovich, uh, before Turing, found this uh, mechanism of stability without giving too much detail, detail but he anticipated this uh, possibility of thermal diffusive instability uh, much uh, before Turing. Uh, it anticipates this result here without, the, uh, without uh, giving a full proof for this. Uh, now let me summarize from a physical point of view. If you have a heavy, heavy hydrocarbons, meaning that the diffusion coefficient of the fuel is smaller than the diffusion coefficient of the oxidizer, and if you consider lean mixture of heavy hydrocarbon, the limiting species is the fuel, uh, uh, <coughs> lean mixture, and the, the species is in, ex in excess is oxidizer. In that case, <coughs> the, uh, 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 the limiting component, component uh, is play, uh, me, this DF, the D, in my previous analysis, should be DF, 
and uh, uh, the thermal diffusivity should be uh, uh, the oxidizer. And uh, uh, when uh, uh, this uh, dt over d order is, is large, you are thermal diffusive and stable. stable. So which means that lean mixture of heavy hydro hydrocarbon uh, sh uh, should, should lead to thermodiffusive stable flame. On the opposite, rich mixture of heavy hydrocarbon should be thermodiffusive unstable. And this is typic an ex typical example is a propane air. Propane is high, high is an heavy, is uh, yes, uh, uh, a molecule uh, larger than the molecule of oxygen, so that the diffusion coefficient is smaller. And so, for the, when the mixture, when the rich mixture, when the mixture is rich for an heavy hydrocarbon, you are uh, thermodiffusively unstable, uh, as uh, uh, it's well known now. Uh, but by the same, uh, in the same uh, way. The rich mixture of light fuel are thermodiffusive stable. And this, uh, the example is with hydrogen air. So now, just to give you the flavor of uh, what happened when you put together uh, 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 the um, hydrodynamic and stability and the thermal diffusive mechanism, if the Markstein number is negative, you, you, you have such a, a, a curve of the growth rate in terms of the wave number. The diffusion mechanism also always stabilize the large wavelengths, uh, the large wave number, which means the small wavelength. But hydrodynamic, you know, destabilize every uh, uh, in linear in kappa, kappa, but here you have a stabilizing term in kappa square, which dominate the hydrodynamic instability for, uh, for a, a small wavelength. So, <clears throat> and in, in the opposite, when the Markstein number is positive, you, you, you are uh, the curve linear growth rate versus the uh, uh, wave number is below, still is always below the uh, 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 linear, the straight line of describing the hydrodynamic instability. And what this is a propane, propane lean flame, which is stable because the Mach time num number flame and the uh, 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 a rich propane flame is unstable. It's here. You see what I have given you in the first. Uh, now, uh, Sivashinsky uh, uh, went one step further by considering the uh, nonlinear uh, uh, mechanism because this, this analysis here. is the result of linear analysis. So when you are unstable, uh, what is the fate of the, uh, of the flame, of the flame surface? <clears throat> Turns out that uh, Sivashinsky working for small trilis, which means that this, this slope is small, when the trilis is small, the hydrodynamic, that's right. Now, for small working the limit of small uh, uh, small heat release, uh, it turn it obtains dominant term uh, nonlinear term in, in the equation, and this nonlinear term is easy to understand from and it was understood by Zell Richard from uh, the the, uh, the geometrical point of view. You see, if you have a, a, a surface that propagates a uh, curve, propagates uh, 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 with a constant velocity, you are going to uh, bring a cusp, to build cusp 
and curve. And, and the instability final, finally is like that you have, you have this kind, which is due to the nonlinear geometrical term, just de describe the, what is called the Huygens construction, which is well known in optics. Uh, it turns out that uh, now, uh, when looking for a sufficiently large Lewis number, uh, we have obtained uh, uh, with uh, Guijoulin uh, an, inst an oscillatory instability. I will not go into the detail, but this was known, or this is called for a pla planar pulsation that the, the planar, flame, planar flame is unstable and is pulsated. And this was observed in typical combustion of solids. Uh, and we, with Guijoulin, we obtained in 39 a full description of this, of this oscillatory instability. Okay, now uh, I, I just uh, uh, introduce the following lecture. So this, uh, so I have to skip, uh, so escape here. Good, and I go to the other. Wait a minute. I just introduced the, the following lecture. Okay. Uh, where it is? So it's uh, un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, is six. Okay. No. Okay. The following lecture is uh, an interesting problem, uh, uh, which is a thermal quenching of flame and flammability limits. So, uh, 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 so it's one, two, three, four. So the problem I want now to address is the uh, extinction of flame through thermal loss to begin with. It turns out that uh, when you used, uh, uh, this was recognized very early at the beginning of the 19th century uh, by Davy, that when you make a flame propagating in tubes smaller and so of size, smaller and so smaller, of diameter smaller and smaller, below a certain uh, uh, small value of the diameter, the flame can no longer propagate. And this, uh, uh, this is because uh, the heat losses uh, to, the, uh, to the wall is too strong. And it turns out that a small heat release, uh, 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 excuse me, a small heat loss uh, compared to the chemical re heat release can quench the flame. <coughs> uh, in order to study this problem, uh, in fact, <laughs> the story is the following, it is funny. Uh, this problem, I solved that with my first PhD student, uh, Guy Joulin, uh, around, uh, uh, it was around 70, 76, 77, I don't remember. And when I visit Los Alamos I, uh, in the 80s, 80s, 80 something, uh, I, I, I should, uh, they have a, a large library of uh, 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 very, very old uh, uh, papers. And I found that paper of Zeldovich who explained the results that we have published <laughs> much later with Gijoulin. Let me show you uh, how it works. Uh, the, the analysis. It's an interesting nonlinear analysis, by the way. Uh, 
So, okay, where, where is my pointer? Okay. Now, here, this is the equation. Forget about this term to begin with here. This is a, a, the, the, the equation for a, a planar frame uh, using reduced uh, uh, coordinates that are written here. Uh, uh, here are the equation. This is for the spatial, for the, uh, the equation uh, <coughs> uh, for the limiting spaces. And this is the equation for the reduced temperature, okay? And assume that you have a volumetric heat loss here, you know, it's a negative uh, uh, term if when theta is positive. And, and, and this, uh, this is a T cool, one over T cool is a rate of uh, taking out the heat. And uh, when you multiply by tau L, it's a relative rate compared to the heat release by the chemical reaction across the, the, the plate zone. So this number here uh, characterize the intensity of the heat losses. Uh, and uh, 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 because the uh, you, you, uh, the uh, transit time of a particle is the ratio of the thermal diffusive, uh, uh, the thermal uh, diffusion coefficient by the square of the laminar flame speed. You, uh, oh, excuse me. Uh, you, uh, you can, and, and because the cooling the cooling rate should be proportional to the diffusion coefficient in a tube uh, of radius air, air. This, the cooling term uh, by uh, the, uh, toward the uh, cold uh, uh, walls could be of the order of the thermal diffusivity divided by the I square. So you have here a factor the ratio of these two time, which is uh, written here, which is measures the intensity of the uh, uh, heat loss, the rate of heat loss, compared to the rate of heat release, uh, uh, chemical heat release. So this is this is this radius, this uh, scalar here is describing this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this ratio of the rate of heat release divided by the rate uh, the rate of uh, heat loss by the the rate of heat release. Good. Now the boundary condition is the following: that at minus infinity, you are in the fresh mixture. The temperature is the, yeah, is zero. And the mass fraction is one of the limiting spaces. But it turns out that because now of the cooling, uh, the cooling rate, you are cooling here because of the, of the heat, uh, the heat loss, you are cooling back uh, to the initial temperature. So you have such a profile of the temperature. Now, in order to study uh, now this flame structure, which is, you see, it's a similar analysis, uh, similar to the Zeldovich analysis, except that you have an additional term, which is uh, choose to be linear in the temperature in the uh, energy equation. You know, you, you just have this uh, term in addition. So it, it should, to first look, it's not difficult to solve this problem. It turns out that it is not so easy. But once again, one has to be, uh, to, to consider a distinguished limit, an asymptotic limit, uh, <coughs> uh, in, in, with such a way 
that the coefficient measuring the rate of the relative rate of heat loss is small, is of order one over the act radius activation energy when the activation energy is large. So uh, this is called a distinguished limit. This problem can be solved in the limit as, as uh, uh, Zeldovich did in 38 for the adiabatic flame. Uh, but, uh, uh, but this additional term, it can be solved. If this additional term is small, it's of order one over beta in the limit of large activation beta going to infinity. In a sense, it's more easy to understand that writing beta larger than unity, much larger than unity, and not uh, to write infinity, people did I say it is zero. No, no, it's the order of magnitude of this cooling rate, uh, which is of order one of the beta the radius. So this H coefficient is of order unity. And it, it turns out that in that case, the modification of the flame temperature, uh, which, was, which was unity without cooling, now is of order one over beta. And so you can solve the problem completely. Now, uh, you have to determ determine the flame temperature, uh, which is smaller than the adiabatic flame temperature. So you used, as uh, explained before, the jump across uh, uh, the thin reaction zone. You have the kinetic relation here, and you have the conservation of enthalpy here of the flux. So, uh, 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 now you can solve this external, uh, the external solution is easy to solve because you see the external solution, look, um, <clears throat> yeah, so you do not have uh, this reaction term. So this is a linear equation. It's clearly easy to, to solve. Uh, and by, by assuming uh, that, that uh, uh, Theta F is the flame temperature. So you have this equation, and in the burn side, and burn in the burn side, you have this equation. And th so this now uh, is valid up to the first order in one over beta. <coughs> and then now you apply you apply the, the, the jump condition, uh, which is written here. Uh, conservation of enthalpy across the thin heat, the thin uh, reaction zone. And this tells you immediately that the, act, the temperature, what is the temperature, the, dec the variation of temperature, the decrease of temperature due to the heat release. You see it is simply proportional to this coefficient H that is of all unity and measuring the a rate of heat loss and new square, which is, in fact, <coughs> the new the the new flame speed. Okay, so new is a fl new flame speed divided by the uh, adiabatic flame speed, and H is this coefficient of all unity measuring the small uh, heat losses. And uh, excuse me. Uh, and. Uh, uh, now, if you use, if you combine this equation me, here, uh, coming from the conservation of enthalpy across the thin reaction zone, and the kinetic relation telling you that the heat uh, uh, escaping from the uh, uh, upstream to warm up. Uh, the uh, uh, the uh, pre-heated zone uh, is equal to the heat uh, it flux leaving the inner structure. This this is what we call the kinetic relation. Putting together this relation and this relation here, you obtain this expression here, which can be. Uh, that nu is exponential minus h minus nu square, which takes the form nu square log the nu square 
equal to h and knowing so i keep in mind that h is the coefficient of our unity measuring the heat, the rate of heat losses the heat losses and mu is a modify mu is a simply the ratio of the flame speed uh, divided by the adiabatic flame speed that is when there is no heat losses so now uh, <laughs> this, this equation uh, has a turning point in such a way that uh, uh, when h is larger than uh, 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 a given quantity of all the unity here there is no more solution so when h equals zero the sol adiabatic solution is mu equal one when you increase the heat release the heat loss the flame speed decreased 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 and there is no more solution above when the rate of it release is, too, is sufficiently large. And this is what we call <coughs> a thermal quenching. The flame cannot propagate. Planar flame can both, cannot propagate in a quasi steady way. Uh, but in fact, there is no, it can be shown that there is no propagation of flame uh, for such uh, sufficiently large it really but it turns out that because of uh, uh, because of this relation here uh, the it really is it's for h of all the unity because beta is large it turns out that the it really is that is quite the excuse me the it loss that is quenching the flame is in fact small compared to the heat release by the chemical reaction. So, <clears throat> so they describe a quenching, a thermal quenching of the flame, okay, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for a loss a rate, a, a rate of loss of energy loss, which is relatively small. Uh, so uh, uh, now, uh, after explaining the extension through thermal loss, it is also important to understand uh, uh, that what what the chemical kinetics all, all also imply concerning quenching of free. So. Uh, As you know, I am sure you know that already, and you have a, a course of uh, chemical kinetics, uh, so you must know that very well now, uh, is that the reaction uh, uh, sustaining the combustion, the exothermal reaction, is never, uh, can, is all the time uh, 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 a, a complex, uh, a, 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 a complex uh, uh, number, no, 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 not complex number, uh, is it, it, produced by many, many elementary reactions. For example, uh, uh, the hydrogen oxygen reaction. Uh, here I have a, a retained, uh, let's say, uh, 10 plus, so let's say 10, 11, 12, 12 reactions, elementary reactions uh, that are involved uh, in the combustion of hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, the, the three, this, this uh, uh, reduced scheme, this is already a reduced scheme. You have much more, much more re uh, reaction than that. But this, uh, this 11, 12 uh, elementary reaction here, I assume uh, are, sub are, are shown to be the most uh, essential uh, uh, 
elementary reaction that you have to take into account to describe the combustion of a hydrogen of oxygen. Uh, it, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, These reactions are uh, classified in three categories. The three first here, one, two, three, it's what is called the shuffle reaction. Uh, the result of this shuffle reaction, when you combine uh, this three reaction, uh, roughly speaking, is producing a, 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 the, decompo the reaction of O2 and three hydrogen axons to give two <clears throat> a molecule of water plus two radicals of H. With a rate, and this is what is important, which is proportional to the uh, concentration of the radical. So you are producing radicals H at a rate proportional to uh, uh, the radical H. This is called a chain branching reaction. This is going to introduce a, a, a runaway in, 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 in the concentration of hydrogen because, uh, <clears throat> because this, this being exothermic, you develop uh, more hydrogen uh, uh, radical than you are consuming hydrogen. Now, you have two types of uh, uh, reactions uh, which are written here. Uh, the, 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 the for, for example, consider the reaction for F here, elementary reaction for F. It tells you that it is consuming H, okay, at a rate proportional to H. So it is a competing reaction for the uh, for uh, competing, it's a competing uh, uh, with the chain branching reaction, which is producing H as uh, 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 increasing exponentially, and this is consuming H uh, 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 like that. It turns out that uh, the situation is a little bit more complicated because there is not only this reaction, but you have to take into account these two other reactions. But in a sense, it's in us to, to, to understand the physics, the simple way, uh, the simplest uh, uh, mechanism that are involved in the elementary chemical kinetics, you can keep in, in mind a chain branching reaction competing with, with a chain breaking reaction uh, as, as it is written here. Now, <clears throat> and now, uh, if uh, you, you want to uh, initiate the reaction, uh, you, you should to, to decompose the reactants to, in terms of radical H, so that this radical H, and this is called an initiation reaction, this radical H, which is produced by the decomposition of the molecular hydrogen and oxygen, and this you have now HO2, uh, uh, which is involved in this uh, recycling set with NUF, that not so important. You can con con consider this HO2 as a product. It is not a product, but uh, to the first approximation. So you initiate the reaction by the decomposition of the product and you initiate the production of the radical. This production is, is amplified by uh, the shuffling reaction chain breaking, which is 
more your age, more you producing age, and the the mechanism is stopped uh, uh, by, by uh, the chain breaking reaction. This is in fact uh, uh, can be understood in a very simple way that is uh, presented now using a simplified two-step model. You see, the branching uh, in a flame, <clears throat> uh, let me tell you the, the following. In a flame, you do not need the initiation reaction. Why? Because if you have radical H somewhere in the uh, reaction zone somewhere, because of diffusion, this radical is uh, going to be uh, <coughs> to diffuse upstream. So you do not need initiation reaction. In a flame, what you need is a chain branching and a chain breaking. And now a, a very simple uh, uh, two-step mechanism uh, uh, describing this competition between the chain breaking and the chain breaking is this one. Assume that you have a this, you are decomposing a reactant in product, but in two steps. First, through an intermediate species called X here. And, and this intermediate species, which is plays the role of the radical H here, is, is produced by consuming the reactant at a speed which is proportional to the, to the concentration of this intermediate species. So this, this is what is called a, 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 a branching reaction. Now, uh, this uh, radical, this intermediate space X is consumed by a combination with uh, either a radical, a radic uh, a reactant or a product, it, uh, that, uh, uh, is, let's say, it's a destroy uh, producing a, a product and liberating it. It turns out that this reaction, the branching also liberate it. Usually, the heat release by the uh, 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 chain breaking reaction here it is larger. And, in the first approximation, you can retain only the heat release here so to, to, to simplify the problem. And now it's uh, with this simplified two-step model, uh, uh, which is uh, due to Zeldovich. The main point is the following, is that the branching reaction follow an activation energy. It's an Arrhenius law. It it's grows exponentially with the temperature, the rate. But the reaction, the, the recombination reaction, the, the chain breaking here, here is, is independent from the temperature. As soon as the radical X or the intermediate space uh, uh, collide with, uh, let's say, one species, let's say, a product, for example, to, to, to give a second product in that species, liberating it. Now, you, 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 this, this reaction rate, which is written here, which is still, which is proportional to the concentration of the radical as the branching reaction rate is proportional, but this is not depending on the temperature. In a sense, this activation energy here is almost zero. Now, if I plot the two rates here in terms of the temperature, I found that there is <coughs> a, 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 if you you know you compare these two rates, Cx, the concentration of X does not appear in the comparison. The only thing that appear is uh, the concentration of the reactant time, the Arrhenius factor coming from uh, the uh, 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 branching reaction, 
and the other is the, uh, the uh, reaction, the rate of conception of X, which is NBF, which does not depend on temperature. So this one is almost a horizontal line, and this one is a, 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 a reaction rate strongly increasing with the temperature. What happened? That there is a crossover temperature below this temperature the consumption of the radical of the intermediate species X is faster than this production by the chain breaking, forgetting about the initiation, which is very, very small. So in that, in that, so in a sense, below this crossover temperature, you cannot have any reaction, which means that the combustion cannot proceed below this crossover temperature. It turns out that this crossover temperature, or whatever be the fuel, is between, let's say, I, I am not quite sure of this result, but I will say it's, it cannot be smaller than 800 Kelvin, and typically it's not larger than uh, for, uh, uh, 1,400 Kelvin. So this is an interesting result coming from the, uh, an elementary uh, <clears throat> consideration of chemical kinetics and that uh, the, the, the combustion cannot produce below a crossover for, for when, the, uh, when the temperature is, is below this. Therefore, uh, you know, if, if the heat release is not sufficiently strong to uh, increase the temperature above this crossover temperature, the flame cannot propagate. So now when you have a competition but between heat release, the heat, uh, the rate of heat release and the loss of heat release because of some loss, uh, it is clear that you, you have, to, you have an, an additional effect coming from the kinetic, uh, uh, chemical kinetics, quite different from the effect I have just described by the pure thermal quenching, which is due to the crossover temperature. Okay, I think I am going to stop here. And uh, tomorrow I will finish this part because now I have to go, I will not have time in us uh, uh, to go further uh, below this point. So thank you very much and uh, see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Thank you, Professor. So, Professor, there are, uh, um, yeah, and I think that questions have been answered already. Um, so, thank you very much for the lecture, Professor, and uh, we'll see everybody tomorrow. Thank you. Okay. Okay. You have no 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 questions. Um, I uh, I don't see any questions uh, in the question and answer. Okay. Okay. There is. Okay. So okay. okay. So see you tomorrow. <laughs> see you. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.